Let me read to you a passage from the 24th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 13 to 35. It's the Gospel for Wednesday within the octave of Easter. St. Luke writes, Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are! And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he talked with us on the road, and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them, assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. That's from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. There is mention there of the fulfilment of the scriptures. There is a notice about Luke, the author of the third gospel and the Acts, in St. Paul's letter to Philemon, verse 24. He is one of Paul's fellow workers, we read. He is also mentioned in Colossians, chapter 4, verse 14, as the beloved physician. In the second letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verse 11, St. Paul writes that Luke alone is with me. Another early reference to Luke is in the anti Marcionite prologue to the Gospel of Luke, a document which has been dated to the later 4th century. One scholar, Helmut Kirster, claims that the following part of it, the only part preserved in the original Greek, may have been composed in the late 2nd century. That part is this, Luke, a native of Antioch, by profession a physician. He had become a disciple of the Apostle Paul and later followed Paul until his martyrdom. Having served the Lord continuously, unmarried and without children, filled with the Holy Spirit, he died at the age of 84 years. Despite various theories, Luke's introduction to his Gospel seems to indicate that he was not among those who from the beginning, as he writes, were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, 
and who delivered to us the things that have been accomplished among us. He places himself among those who received from those eyewitnesses and having followed all things closely for some part time past, he is making it his business now to write an orderly account for Theophilus. This is in order that you may know the truth concerning the things of which you have been informed. Luke chapter 1 verse 1 to 4. It is plain from the Acts of the Apostles that he had a special and long association with St Paul. We cannot be sure whether Luke was a Gentile convert or, say, a Jew of the Diaspora in, say, Antioch or perhaps Troas, for in the Acts of the Apostles it is at Troas that the account becomes we rather than just St Paul. So we can't be sure whether he, uh, just where he came from, um, but he attached himself in friendship and service to a very great master, St Paul. Now if there was anything which St Paul, the ex-Pharisee, excelled in, it was his understanding of the scriptures, the law, the prophets and the writings. Paul had met the risen Jesus and had been taught by him, well after, of course, the Ascension and Pentecost. Paul had come to see with utter conviction, together with the rest of the infant church, that the promised Messiah was Jesus of Nazareth, and that the scriptures had been fulfilled in him. Luke had learnt this extremely important lesson well, and we see in his Gospel, as with the other three Gospels, his tracing this to the teaching of Jesus himself. In fact, this point, that Jesus fulfills the scriptures, is a very prominent feature of Luke's account of the resurrection. We read that at early dawn on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb. The two angels who announced that he has risen reminded them that he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. Luke chapter 24 verse 6 to 7. They were reminding the women of the oft-repeated teaching to his disciples that the scriptures foretold his passion, death and resurrection. By dying and now rising he had fulfilled the scriptures. So this was the very first thing they heard upon the angelic declaration that he had risen from the dead. In Mark the angel tells them that Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified and now risen, was going before them to Galilee. But there is nothing at this point about his having fulfilled the scriptures. It is the same in Matthew, chapter 28, verse 6 to 7. The next episode in Luke's account of the resurrection, chapter 24, is of the risen Christ's joining two of the disciples who were going that day to, on foot, by foot to Emmaus. And that's our gospel today. They were not two of the eleven. Indeed, the eleven were not at all among the first to see the risen Jesus. So, Jesus joined them, and the conversation turned on one thing, what the scriptures had foretold about the Messiah. Luke tells us what Christ said on their informing him of the cause of their profound depression. He said, O foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? With that introduction, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Luke chapter 24, verse 25 to 27. The impression we are given is that this lesson on the meaning of the scriptures took the whole time of their journey on foot. It was near evening when they arrived. It was profoundly enlightening to them, and their hearts were deeply stirred. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? Chapter 24, verse 32. And then when our Lord appears to the eleven that evening, after having shown, showed he had risen from the dead, chapter 24, verse 39 to 42, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. They too receive instruction from Jesus on how his death and resurrection fulfilled the scriptures. 
Luke is convinced of the importance of this feature of the mystery of Jesus Christ, and he wishes to record the high importance that Christ himself, risen from the dead, gave to it. It is a principal feature of Luke's account of the resurrection. Let us endeavour to understand the scriptures and to see that Jesus Christ is the key to their interpretation. Once in possession of that key, the scriptures will help us to appreciate the grandeur of Jesus Christ and the magnificence of his passion, death and resurrection. St. Jerome once wrote that ignorance of the scriptures is ignorance of Christ. We must interpret that statement broadly, of course, but what our Lord himself taught shows forth its truth. 